County Commissioner's meeting, October 23rd, 2018. Sure. Good morning. Welcome to the Franklin County Board of Commissioners regular weekly meeting for Tuesday, October 23rd, 2018. For the record, all three commissioners are here as well as County Administrator Keith Johnson. Okay. So at this time, we'll officially call the meeting to order and ask you to join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning, Mr. Erdman. Would you like to just come on up and join us, please? First item on our agenda this morning is County Road Project 602, which is the June for Dunes Access Road. And uh, we're going to talk about the contract for construction this morning. Yes. Okay. Well, as you know, on October 2nd, uh, we opened bids for this project, and on October 9th, the board awarded the Juniper Dunes Access Road Project to Goodman and Mellenbacher Enterprises Incorporated for the sum of $2,084,968.29. Uh, Game Incorporated has submitted the appropriate insurance forms, performance bond, payment bond for this contract. Uh, Public Works is prepared to execute the contract, and we ask today that the board approve the resolution and execute the contract. We'll be one step closer to getting the ball going. There you go. Yeah. So, Craig, in the fiscal impact of the agenda summary report, it says that the BLM has committed a million Western Federal Lands Highway Division has committed a million five ninety three five hundred for a total of two million five hundred ninety three thousand five hundred. Um, I'm assuming, and correct me if I'm wrong, that that total amount is substantially more than the bid because it covers land acquisition, environmental planning, a bunch of other things other than the actual construction. Correct. Plus, the, uh, the county did contribute. Three to four hundred thousand dollars in like um, already. You know, we, we in in in, <coughs> in service and kinds. We did right away acquisition okay. as part of the contract. Like, uh, how, how much did you say? Yes, thank you. Okay. How much? Uh, approximately four hundred thousand, I believe. Yeah. That was largely in kind mm -hmm. staff work, not correct. That was offer match to the project, mm -hmm. and we had spent some. Uh, portion of that in earlier evolutions of the project. Sure. I just wanted to kind of walk through that for people who are saying we've got two point almost six million and the bids mm -hmm. two million. So yes, we were fortunate and had a very competitive bid environment. It doesn't happen very often, frankly, in my recollection. No. And in in all candor, I I thought we were tight and and it ended up being yeah. very favorable. So. so we got a good bid from a, a local firm which. Is a win win for what I said. Okay, yeah. hey, another question. I will make a motion to accept exec, excuse me, executing the contract between Franklin County and Goodman and Mel Barker Enterprising Game Inc. for CRP 602 June for Dunes Recreational Access Area Access. And then that's resolution 2018-318. Great. Second. We have a motion and a second for <coughs> approval of position 2018-318 as presented. Other comments or discussions? Um, I'm noting that there's also a separate contract here. And I just want to check the signatures. Two copies of the resolution. Thank you. 
323 pages of read ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there's, mm -hmm. there's three, uh, three signatures on the contract itself. So, uh, what's the pleasure of the board? Do you want to amend your motion to include signing the contract, or you just want to do a separate motion right after? How about we just do a separate motion? Yeah, it's okay. Okay. Any other comments or questions? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, so the resolution is approved. And would appreciate a motion just for the formality to uh, approve the contract. Hey, Chairman, I will move to approve the contract. Um, and that is, is there a title to it? Yeah, uh, our our resolution. So we've got the resolution. Um, it should be. The, uh, this resolution doesn't. You know, it it's says it's yeah, executing I contract. I read back and read the very last line of the, of the therefore, it's the, and it does cover. So, okay, so we don't need that. Second motion. Okay. Good, thank you. Hmm. Okay. Getting the ball down the field. Got it all in yeah. <laughs> one short little resolution. That's pretty concise, actually. Yeah. Well, uh, Kathleen and I, neither one of us are much for words. We tried to get <laughs> <them> to <laughs> you got right to the point on that one. Uh, yeah, only 323 pages of it. <laughs> I'm sure all you work on this, you and yeah. the rest of the staff. <laughs> <laughs> Insurance policies have a place for a counter signature. That's not anything you need from us, is it? Insurance forms in those packets. I don't think so. Check with Kevin after testing to make sure. Okay. I think so too. I just am not sure. So. Thank you. Next item on our agenda this morning is uh, a second look at the 2019 budget for the Franklin County Pest Board. Uh, Mr. Wilson, I see you're here. Yeah. Thank you for joining us this morning. Yeah, I've got one board member here. This is Katie Buckley. She's with the State Department of Ag. She's one of our board members. And then Pam Gilmore there Great. is an orchard. She's one of our board members. Okay, so as I recall from our last conversation, uh, you remind us that a few years ago the board had uh, at least notionally signed on the idea of building up a reserve so that if you had a, an unexpected year where a lot of acreage had to be taken out, you had the cash flow to do that. And that uh, we had a discussion about <clears throat> now that the county has an established reserve fund, that we could make that reserve fund available for you. You wouldn't have to build a big cash flow reserve, and that would allow you to reduce the, the fees on growers. All that sound accurate? About right. Okay. So <clears throat> that brings us back here, which my understanding is simply to reduce the fees and get consensus from the board that we will, in fact, use that reserve fund to back you up if you have one of those bad years like you did. I think we discussed about one in 20 years. And are anticipating, yeah. Yeah, and you are anticipating a year like that? Well, there's stuff in Canada that, uh, what's it called? 
Well, there's European Shrew Fruit Fly in Canada. In Pennsylvania, there's also Spotted Lantern Fly. That's the one that I'm really worried about right now. So what you're thinking is that we should keep that reserve for those lights or whatever disease yeah. that could come in? Yeah. Um, the, the problem is, is that with pest management, especially of invasive species, if you can got, get on that immediately with reserves that we have immediately available, mm -hmm. it yeah. solves a lot of problems in the long mm -hmm. run. That's what they're currently facing in Pennsylvania with spotted lanternfly is they didn't get enough funds fast enough to take care of the problem, and it's now being found in Virginia and multiple other counties in Pennsylvania. And the one up in Canada could come down here real easy. So when yeah. you talk about funds fast enough, <clears throat> what is fast? Within a week. Okay. I don't see any reason why the board couldn't do it within a week or less, okay. given that we have a meeting every week and we can do a special meeting on 48 hours notice. So I don't, I don't see that as an issue. <clears throat> My interest is in trying to reduce the fee on growers and use reserves that the county already has <clears throat> instead of building a second reserve fund. And as long as those funds are rapidly available to you, I, I think we can serve the interests of everybody. Um, so did you let them know what we decided in our last meeting? Yeah, they've got uh, copies of the, uh, the uh, okay. resolution where we passed and we lowered it for the orchardists from $4 an acre to $3 an acre. Yeah. They got a new budget that reflects that too and expenditures that reflects that too. Yeah. You, you walk into joints. Because it's a public meeting, we have to do it onto the microphone. Um, <clears throat> my concern is the amount of the reserve. What is that reserve currently set at? 60000 for next year. Okay. I know that sounds like a lot, but I'm a small grower. I'm a small virtuous. We have roughly 140 acres, not all planted at one time because we're always changing. Uh, we easily have, if I just set aside pest and insect, or insect and disease, uh, over $100,000 per year. Uh, and I have in the past lost a block to spotted wing drosophila. That's a new pest. Uh, it was only nine acres, but that's very huge when you look at a, a small operation like us. Sure. I don't believe that forty or $60,000 is enough uh, because it only takes a bigger problem to make it spiral out of control. And when the money's gone, the money's gone for a grower like us. We can't do anything. And as long as that reserve is protected and not uh, being able to be abused, I think that that reserve needs to be much, much higher. Uh, I mean, small operations like us, I mean, our operating budget is, is much over a million dollars and um, it's sort of like in the winter when you have a nice winter well that reserve and the road crew builds but when you have a bad year uh, I, I don't I don't think we should change yeah. anything personally I if we do that that's well, that's up to the board. Let's, let's review kind of how we got here because yeah. it feels like we're on two very different pages yeah. <clears throat> what was described to us by Tom was that these funds were needed so that if there was an emergency and a, and a block of trees or, or acreage needed to be removed, we talked about how much that would cost and we talked about the statistics of how often that happens. And in the past 20 years or more, it had, it had been zero or one, I don't want to recall offhand, but it was a very rare occurrence. And we looked at how much it would cost to do that and the county carries in the neighborhood of a $2 million cash reserve. Okay, and so you would be able to, to put that forward? Well, that's what we, that's, that was the whole discussion was, if we can reduce the fees on the growers, and instead of keeping a separate cash account in the pest board, agree, the board agree, that we would make those reserves available. Now, they would have to, be, in time, be replenished, but if it's only a one in 20 year event or more, 
and we hate to put those fees on growers for something that is well, can grower, happen, but doesn't. Grower, sure. I don't mind paying that four dollars, but it's four fifty or four dollars. Four dollars. Four dollars. Yeah. <coughs> I, I will tell you, you're one of the rare people to, well, to tell me I that. Have never, I have never heard anybody complain yeah. about the money that they pay to get passed for. Uh, there's other taxes that we complain about. Sure. But that is, that's our insurance. And I, I have done this for the last 30 mm -hmm. years in orchards, so I'm not really, but I can tell you, sure. well, Katie can tell you how many new pests are coming in. And a lot of the chemicals that we use to fight those pests are gone. We have nothing that will kill a coddling moth. Sure. We have things that will kill larvae. Yeah. They can get away from you very, very quickly. And well, so I just, I am a person that believes in insurance. And if we have a really big problem and you're willing to put out a million dollars, I can tell you that $60,000 in the reserve of the pest board w wouldn't even take care of half of my orchard if I got into a bad problem. Um, yeah, so, so it was it was presented to, to the board and... Thankfully, these meetings are recorded, so if there's ever any question, people can go back and listen to exactly what was presented. But uh, it was presented that the reserve was available so that if we had a situation where something couldn't be controlled and that it was the grower's responsibility to control it, but if it couldn't for whatever reason and that had to be removed, uh, that that could be done and what the cost would be to do that and how how often that happens and it was described that it was a, a rare occurrence not even once in 20 years if i remember the numbers that were presented um and the costs were well within um certainly the county's reserves and the discussion of the reserve that was trying to be created by the pest board let me go back to the numbers here was far smaller than what you're describing you know you just referenced a million dollars and the uh, reserve was a hundred thousand heading for a hundred yeah heading, heading for a hundred thousand so <laughs> I guess there's two things that we really need to get clear on before we make a final decision one is um, what is the, the real amount that we need to have in a reserve what is it eligible to be used for and how often, how likely is that to happen? The information we got last time was not likely, hadn't happened in the last 20 years, uh, that 100000 was going to be more than enough to cover it. And today I'm hearing a million. And well, I'm saying that at our, at our last board meeting, right. that the potential for uh, something to go wrong is there. Sure. And... All we're really talking about is which bank we want to use. Right. Do we want the growers to fund their own reserve on fees, or do we want to use an existing reserve well, since the in, risk in is low? a really big emergency, we'd probably use all of ours and yours. And it might be a while before you could sure. replenish that. Sure. Uh, I, Katie, you, would, you would also normally have a reserve um, control fund from the state that you could pull from, mm -hmm. as well as if it was a major invasive species, the USDA often helps fund that. Sure. Now, the problem is the USDA takes a long time to get that funding to you, so having an immediate reserve is very helpful. The other problem is, is that the state control fund is virtually depleted, and we're looking into raising the assessment fees statewide, um, possibly to help fund that in the future. But that's going to be several years out, and the industry is currently in talks on how exactly they want to do that. So that is not currently an option. So you're just saying that we'd probably use a lot of your, your reserves if something really bad happened. Well, what I'm also the, hearing is The that other thing is, in Franklin County, you're correct, it has been very rare that that reserve has needed to be tapped into. Sure. That is not the case with other counties in the state. And I think problems could move this way easy. Yes. Yeah. So then what you're telling me is not only the reserve you have, but the reserve you're trying to build is useless and a real problem. It, it, no. it won't even come close to touching the scenario. It's not. 
useless. Well, um, I'm talking in the catastrophic scenario you gave us. It, it's all helpful. In a, in a catastrophic scenario, yeah. no, it will not be the only fund that we so, need. So, what kind but, of what kind of scenarios are we facing that a fifty, sixty thousand dollar reserve wouldn't handle? Spotted lantern fly. Okay, and and what um, is what does that look like in terms of risk? I'll put it this way. Spotted lantern flies' major hosts include hops and grapes. Sure. They can build up to numbers of over 500 insects on one plant. Right. Um, they basically ruin any crop whatsoever with downy mildew because of the droppings that they exude. Uh, they also like to infest apples as well. So you're looking at a major invasive species that would heavily impact the agriculture in this area. Um, and for that, you would probably get state funding and USDA funding, but in the case of Pennsylvania, that happened too little too late, and it's sure. currently spreading. That's the kind of scenario yeah. that's the worst case. Most issues, for example, abandoned orchards, if you can go in and pull them out, that's more something that um, coddling moth um, yeah. would our history in the last quarter of a century. Yeah, well, has been. It's mostly been cobbling moth. Right. And, um, and because you don't have some of the invasive <laughs> pests in this area as in high numbers as some of the other counties in Washington State. Apple maggot has been a concern, and that's one of the pests that we're concerned about moving into this area yeah, as well. And, and I really don't, you know, candidly, I don't think the discussion is about the various pests. It's about no. the, the totality of the risk and how we bankroll a reserve. And my suggestion was that rather than put additional fees on the growers, use a reserve that already exists. But if you're telling me that the majority of the growers would rather have additional fees placed on them instead of using our bank, okay, I'll go with that. But you're not talking about additional fees. You're just talking about leaving it as it is. Well, there, there is an additional fee on, on the rate. It's already baked in, as they say, but it's a fee that they pay on a per parcel basis for this reserve account. That's how Tom described it to us last week. you're not talking about increasing that amount. No, You're no. talking about decreasing, and I'm just suggesting that we leave it alone so that we can build okay. our reserves so that we can go in and act when we need to. It's very hard to, to go in and yeah. raise it back up again. Well, listen, I'm, I'm not inclined to... Um, you know, if, if the growers want to pay that fee, uh, I would say that 99.9% .9 of the comments that we get as a board from growers, from citizens, and anybody else is they want less fees, not more. They yeah, want fees reduced wherever they can be. I, I have had tree fruit growers <coughs> tell me, yes, absolutely, but it's not a common thing, but it, it has happened. Um, but back to back to the to the real issue here is, we all agree we need a reserve. We all agree that if there's anything significant, the reserve of the pest board isn't going to cover it. No, but it'll be a first strike. <coughs> well, but we agree that if there's a significant event, that reserve isn't going to cover it. Not the kinds of things that, that you've been describing. So really, then it begs the question. Um, are there smaller things that we'd use a reserve for, and what's an appropriate amount? Is the 50 or 60 that we have in there now appropriate for minor emergency kind of situations? And if it is, then, then maybe you're well situated already. If it's not, then you know I'm not opposed to keeping the fee there. I I was trying to look out for growers and reduce their costs on the parcels, but if you're telling me that you know the vast majority or at least the majority of the, of the growers would, would rather have the fee there instead of using our reserve i'm okay i'm sorry but okay yes i, I think that uh, we need to leave it in there i think uh, as being on commodity uh, potato commission before uh, a little different because we had our own assessment but i de definitely know what you mean when you have a flight come in you better get on it the next day and I think the reserve is good for all organizations. It's not a large reserve. It's not a wasteful amount of money. And you're correct, leave it because you never will go back. It's harder to get it. 
I'm satisfied with just leaving it the way it is. I think that's a good way to run that business, and it's a small amount. So it was a large, I would say, I would, I would agree with you. It was much larger. But by the time they get to that, I think one flight could be the disastrous. It could be already spread. And that's the problem with the trees is in the orchards and cutting them off and everything else. I, too, that, uh, I don't know how long I've been on this board, maybe, maybe five years. I don't know. But these guys, they pretty much operate in the shoestring. They're not extravagant at all. And that's so there's thing. not a lot of wasted money in this. And that's what I was going to say. We've got board members here vouching for that. Uh, I, I understand what Commissioner Peck's saying because we do get it about raising, raising and, I, and I do understand that. So. Uh, listen, I, if, if the growers who are the beneficiaries of the service want to pay the full amount as it is now, yeah. that's fine. If, if this were a business, and it were my business, and somebody said, we can reduce your fees and at no cost to you, provide a reserve account for those emergencies that statistically have happened once in a quarter century as a businessman, I'd jump all over that deal. But if if you're telling us, and, and you are, that the growers would rather pay that fee, good with me. None of us like taxes. Well, but none of us, I, it's, I, it's, I understand it's an insurance that. policy that affects us personally. Sure, but you already have that insurance policy is what I'm saying. That, that's not insurance. That's like insuring your million-dollar house for uh, $10,000. That's not an insurance law. A million or two million dollars is not a big reserve. We'd wipe you out in a heartbeat. Well, the reserve we're talking about here is, is sixty thousand dollars, and that's where I, I lose the discussion. But I'm, I'm willing to just say that if if you're comfortable with that, and that's what the growers want to do, then well, by golly, I'll support it. <laughs> I don't see. I, don't, I mean, I don't yeah. see any reason why that reserve cannot fill. The you, you talk about the last quarter of a century. Uh, but Katie can tell you, it's not, it doesn't look the same as it did 25 years ago. And, and I do understand that. It's, it, things are, are there different. There are serious things, and, and it's right. much more expensive sure. to operate. And we have a lot more orchard in Franklin County than we used to. It's it's a multi-billion dollar industry. Yeah, and, and my perception is, and correct me if you think I'm wrong here, but the orchard operations that we have in the county today are, are by and large doing a very responsible job of pest management and some of the issues we saw a quarter of a century ago we're not seeing now too in terms of, of uh, care and maintenance of, of orchards. What's your thought on that? Um, well, I'll tell you what happened this year and I take, we take very good care of our orchards. Sure. Uh, I lost two lots that I never skipped a beat on and doubled up. I couldn't keep on top of Of course I'm organic. I removed them. Sure. But if I didn't have the means to do it, we'd be in big trouble. My neighbors would be pretty upset and they'd be calling and they'd say, You need to get to the Gilmores and take care sure. of this. What, what kind of reserve do you think the pest board ought to have then? Well, you wouldn't like my answer. But I Well if the growers are willing to fund it, I'm I'm well, fine. You're making this a grow this is I mean, it, unless you are getting complaints about uh, people coming in and saying, wow, this $4 per acre is killing us, you're going to have to put it down to three. I, I don't think that we need to change it. I think that it needs to build because yeah. just like inflation, and any responsible grower has a big reserve for the years that they have a bad crop. Right. And that reserve is, is pennies. Uh, and I, every year it will get more expensive to to act, to react and react to a crisis, sure. depending on what it is. So, but so what do we think the pest be board? What do we think the pest board needs for an annual res for a reserve, a standing reserve for these kinds uh, of things? Well, we need a lot, but I I just I, I mean I'm thinking one or two hundred thousand dollars, easy as just a first step. That's me personally because I know what it costs. Sure. I know what it costs to take care of a small orchard, and if you have a big investor, there's people out there that have a hundred thousand or a thousand acres easy. This controlled by an investment firm. They go broke, all of a sudden you've got a great big block. To all the, I mean, who knows what happens yeah. economically? Well, I think we all agree, like I said, on the risk, and we agree on the need to have funds quickly available, and we. 
I think the only the only thing that is even a question is how much reserve is needed and where is the best place to put it. Do we have additional fees on growers and create a separate reserve in the pest board, or do we say we already have a substantial reserve at the county that we're willing to make available in an emergency and use that? And what I'm hearing is, as a grower, that you would prefer that we fund a separate reserve in the pest board and that you're happy to pay that $4 versus $3 on the parcel and that you think that what we have now is one-fourth of what we need because we're at 50 or 60 and you said 100 to 200, so I'm going to assume 200. Well, so we need to keep, keep building it. If the growers are happy with that, I'm perfectly happy. You keep mentioning additional fees. It's not additional. It's just leaving it as it is. Well, yeah, it's just leaving it as I, it is. I understand your description. And I kind of look at you, at you as the umbrella policy, right? You're the umbrella policy. So that if what we have right here in our little pool doesn't take care of it, then you're going to kick in your money. Well, I don't know that that's a guarantee if, if the county hasn't budgeted for it, planned for it, and the board agreed to provide that. Oh, so you're saying you don't know if you would give us the funds? I, I'm saying the plan was if we don't fund this other reserve, then the county would make that commitment. And so when we use those reserve funds for other activities, we fence a portion of it. You know, it's just like any, any risk pool scenario. You've got a pot of money and you say, okay, we can't draw it down below a certain amount because we made commitments to have this much available for this risk, this much for this, and this much for this. If, if the preference is to have a reserve in the passport, then that's, you know, that's fine. Really, really what, we're, what I was trying to do is provide a little bit of relief for growers um, based on the fact that virtually all the feedback that I get, and I think the other commissioners do too, is that taxes and fees are too high and any opportunity we see to reduce those, we should try to do that. So this was simply an effort to try and reduce costs on growers without increasing risk by replacing one reserve fund with one that is much bigger. But if the preference is to continue to build one in the pest board and the growers are okay with paying $4 instead of 3 terrific. Right. I have, to, I have to make those choices every year when I renew my insurance for my farm. Sure, absolutely. It's my risk to, uh, to not insure that tractor or, no, so I usually insure it. Yeah. Uh, but the so difference here is that the county already has that pool and you don't have to buy as much insurance for that tractor. Well, that's what I said. You're, you're our umbrella. But I, I think that, uh, and, and I'll, I'll turn it over to Tom Katie sure. uh, because Katie certainly knows uh, how, how much risk there is at the uh, orchard level. And Tom knows about the budget, but I personally, uh, in my business, uh, reserves are crucial so that you do have the money available. Absolutely. You and I don't think that one or two million dollars uh, is even enough. If, if something catastrophic happened, it would wipe out the industry. Yeah. If do, that happened. Tom, do, does the pest board carry any kind of catastrophic liability or not liability, uh, uh, comprehensive catastrophic insurance? That no. Is, is that something that you've ever looked at with the cost? No, we doing? haven't. We, we got the insurance through the county, but right. not, nothing beyond that. I'm wondering if, if the cost of maintaining a reserve would be, um, you know, if, if purchasing catastrophic insurance might, <clears throat> might be more cost effective than maintaining a reserve. I, I don't know. I don't even know if that kind of insurance is available. It just seems to me like something worth looking at. I don't think it is. Yeah. Usually farmers can insure themselves on an individual scale, not at the S board scale. Yeah. Um, Commissioner Cook, you have probably more corporate county insurance experience than anybody else here. Have you ever seen no, that? Uh, I'd have to agree with Katie. That's okay. It's going to go to the team or feds or, or state. Or the individual growers. And we know what. Yeah. That takes. That, we yeah. that takes. Okay. If and when. Well, it's not. Yeah. I think it's a good discussion. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I, I appreciate your views. I really do. The, the effort here was to reduce cost on growers and provide a bigger reserve than currently exists. Those are the two objectives. And frankly, I'm a little surprised that that there wasn't uh, 
uh, a different response, which would have been great. Thanks for the relief and give us something in writing that you really are going to backstop us, which we were prepared to do. But um, um, I'm also happy to keep yeah. it as is if, if that's what the growers want. And I know that the industry will be discussing over the next several months if they do want a statewide control fund. Um, so I would be happy to forward yeah. what they end up deciding um, on that because it might help you understand where they're coming from. I, I think a statewide fund makes a lot of sense. You yeah. know better than I do how migratory these problems can be and how quickly they can move. And, and that's exactly why we think that it's necessary to have one of those. Um, Franklin County has actually been lucky because they have their own reserve. Um, some of the other counties don't have that. They get their fees differently. Yeah. Um, when was the last time said, we used that reserve for any kind of? This year. Yeah, and how much did we use? Uh, 6,500. Yeah. Plus, plus the Eliza Lab, the enforcement there, which was a couple thousand. So, well, that was Franklin County. This, were you talking about the state fund? No, I was talking about the Franklin County Pest Board reserve account that we've been building. Mm -hmm. When when did we last use that or need that? This summer. And, and how much was that? Six, 62. About 6,000, 7,000. Yeah. And then another two <coughs> in September. Okay. And, and is that pretty consistent year to year, or was that so how long? Well, it hasn't been. This was an abandoned orchard. It was supposedly taken over by a bank back east. Sure. So how long since we had some, how, how long before that did we need those funds? Probably 10 years. Yeah. See, see kind of what I'm getting to is, acres. Is, is a modest reserve fund for those kinds of small events. Mm -hmm. That's fine. And I'm not advocating for doing away with the 60 grand that's there because that seems adequate for these small events. Yes. But anything of the catastrophic scale we're talking about is, is quickly going to eclipse the county, and that's why I think your point about a state fund is, is spot on. And that's and, why we're looking into that. Yeah. Um, and so trying to build a $200,000 county fund seems excessive for the small need and not nearly enough for a catastrophic need and therefore uh, well, it would have to pass through all that. What it would able us to do <coughs> is if you had a catastrophic catastrophe, yeah, you know, major starting problem. to happen, <laughs> major problem starting to happen, we'd be able to nail it right off the bat, maybe spend all our reserve and start getting it stopped while we're getting this help from the state, sure. we're getting this help from the feds. We'd have something to put the brakes on, right? With, and and we're right on the same page with you, Tom. It's just the check would come out of our reserve account instead of yours. But you know, we're, we're good. If that's what you want to do, we're good. You got at least two commissioners. You say so. I think Commissioner Cook probably would agree. I don't know. Yeah, we need to finish this up and. Yeah. and okay. Are we going to adopt the budget that I presented at the last meeting? I don't know that we yeah. adopt the budget. Not this, not this budget, but the last, last budget. budget. You just want to uh, undo your resolution from October 10th, which I'm sure you can do easily right. enough. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have that? Do we have that minutes there? October 10th, we have that down somewhere so we know exact wording. You know, you can, uh, Tom, this last sheet, is this the one from last week or is this the updated one? Uh, that should be the updated one. Say 81,000 on the bottom. Uh, Minus eighty one thousand. It says minus eighty one, but yeah, that's a, that was a change in the budget. But the printed numbers are from last week. No, printed numbers are most of them are from last week, but they're changes to the budget in general, like <coughs> professional services enforcement. Took eighty one thousand three hundred out of that. I, I didn't think there was a motion made last month. I thought uh, last week I thought it was the guys bring back. That's correct. Yeah. yeah. See, that's where I thought we were at. So this motion here, that's why I asked if there was one in so, there and you can't see it. See? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. If you want it, you can, you can simply um, uh, make a motion to adopt the budget uh, presented uh, September 25th, and uh, we can vote on that. Uh, I'll vote nay, which is fine, simply because I, I think that there's a... Uh, well, I've already explained my reasons. I don't need to go into it again. 
but uh, I think there's at least two votes to approve it. So well, I'll I can do it that way. Find out. I move that we go ahead and approve the uh, September 25th, 2018. Okay. Commissioner Cook? Second. Okay, motion is second to adopt the budget presented by the Pest Board on September 25th, 2018. And since that was previously prevented or presented, that's part of the record. We have that, that document. Any other comments or discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. Aye. So the vote is two to one. Uh, the budget from September 25th is approved. And uh, I'm good with it. My vote was simply to reflect that I think we should be trying to reduce fees on growers if we have other means to fund. So. Well, all right. Thank you very much. Yep. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Mm -hmm. Thanks for bringing in some experts to give us more perspective on it. That's always helpful. Yeah, they don't mumble as much as I do. Thank you. That's really good. Okay. That's not. Oh, you're going to get another one. Okay, go. This is a. Yeah, you don't want to sign. No, this is the old. This is the old one. So we just hand it back. That's why you did. Yep. We just have to sign them back. Get it back. Give that one to you. Okay. Good morning. 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 So. I'm not seeing anything in here for uh, minutes. Maybe we'll go separately under that then. Morning, Carla. Good morning. So, uh, next item on our agenda this morning is the approval of 2019 commissioner salaries. Um, understand for those listening who may not be familiar with how this works, we have three commissioner districts. Two of them are elected in presidential years and one district three is elected this year in the off year and uh, so with that carly over to you um for the board's consideration this morning we have um a resolution setting that um district three um commissioner salary for the term um what we've presented today um, maintains the salary at the same level that it is in 2018 um, certainly some room for a discussion there um, this salary does need to be set prior to election day for the term um, pursuant to the applicable statute okay comments discussion from board members I brought some information to Keith, at least. I know Carly got it in as to a graduated or year graduated uh, <coughs> uh, payroll. Um, um, nobody, nobody else in the county starts out at grade seven. If you do bring in a new person. Um, that is certainly an option that the, the board has discretion to, to exercise if they want to. So, so that option was for a year graduation, the first four years, and then progress from there. Oh no, I mean, start up to four years, finish the yeah. term, the four year term, and be up even with everybody else. Yeah, start. yeah. I, I think uh, some of the things I've heard from some of the candidates, um, you know, we should be being paid what the state legislator uh, are getting paid, which is forty thousand. And then just recent article was sixty thousand. Uh, and then get some of the other money. So I, I think, uh, and we have another candidate there that has a different whole idea on the, on the whole plan. So I think that, uh, and I agree, I don't think that we should start out. It took you 16 years to get there, 14, 14 uh, 14, 12, 12 years to get there, right? Took me eight, took you, uh, and, and we all come in with experience. And in the first four years is a, is a, is a year, four year testing, really, that uh, people, you know, you pick up, and from some of the things I've heard from the candidates, there's a lot of education that needs to go on with some of these decisions they have said and made and what they have thought. Uh, you know, and there's two of them, and, and I know the other candidate has uh, spoke on some other plans, uh, which are worth looking at, but once they get in here. I see that, I've got a chart here where we started out. 
mean, Commissioner Cook was at 65,000, I was at 70. And of course, then it was enacted where the Hay Group came in and Peck happened to step into it, not by his choice, into the higher rate, which I was lacking the 30,000, the 30, 23,000, which is still, is still to be brought into the paper when it says I was at 91,000, wanted to go back to 91. It's just an increase of things, but I think the years that we spend here, that's how you increase. So I like your idea. And when we start out, would be uh, I, I think we need to be more of a, a sixty, in between sixty and seventy thousand for the first year. So, do you have any? Did you have any starting point or anything? Like no, that? I just you know I just have, as a graduated you know year one, one, two, three, and four up to the current. Wage at, at 94, but not start at 94. Right. The first year. Would your intention then, Commissioner Cook, be to have them at that 94 in the fourth year? Correct. Yeah, because like I say, nobody else in the courthouse starts at grade seven or full grade. It's a learning process, naturally. And, and, uh, and it's and it shows historically we've done it in the past with graduated uh, pay increases. Exactly. There is a learning curve. So I don't know what kind of number to start with or what kind of separation, if it's 10% uh, a year or 5% a year graduation or, you know, that's kind of a discussion point. Um, And that's certainly why we brought the item this week to allow us to get some direction from the board. Mm -hmm. um, it certainly as you know, clear of an idea as we can get of what your intentions are um, from a consensus standpoint, then we can prepare something for approval next week. Mm -hmm. I, I Think that a seventy thousand beginning, and then in four years they'd be even with the others is, is appropriate. Seventy thousand. Seventy thousand, and then and then the, because we have an inflation, but both of us started at a lot less, and I think because of time, seventy thousand is a good starting point, and that increase, and, and I just think this the they get to vote on their own in four years. They get to vote on if they want to raise theirs to equal. That's where you should be. Allowing them to do that. So I yeah, think I that the fourth year should be up. I think so. But you, you heard what one person said, one of the candidates. And, yeah. and that person may not win, so the other one you got to consider too. But that was a different idea total. Um, might, might just feel that uh, start there and then let them have the four years of testing, see where they're at, and they may not even run again. Uh, they may say this isn't for me, um, or they may run for some other position somewhere. But I do think the first time, maybe we should drop that down. And then the four years, they can elevate to where, because they have a voice in it, to where the others are. And then there's no step increase in between. This would start in 70 and then up. That's how I feel. No. I won't go for that. Well, then what would you go for? You just like I've been saying, I you just, you just graduated up to 94 at fourth year. So you're saying gain about 5000 every year. That's pretty good steep for residents people in fourth house, too. Uh, I mean, if you want to go by that step theory. Yeah. So. Commissioner Cook, do you have a range in mind? I think Commissioner Miller has suggested starting at 70. Well, not necessarily. I think I would look backwards maybe at 10% a year or 5% a year, whatever it's, you know, 70, 75, maybe in, in, uh, um, in 19 and, you know, by 22 be up to the, the fourth year be up to 94. So it just takes some, a little bit of math to, you know, right. back it off. And, Thank you. 
And Commissioner Miller, you were interested in keeping it at 70 yes, for the entire term? Yes, start and go to oh. um, four years, because then they have a voice in there, and they can be equal with the others if that's it. Maybe well, what I hear from both candidates is basically you come back and maybe something different. Now, that doesn't mean nothing, because I know from experience, once you're involved in this, you see how much work it can be. You you think, hey, I'm spending my life here. I'm spending my year here. I'm going to all these meetings, getting the pressure from the Herald and everything else that come out. And so you just say, you know, this isn't, for your health reasons, this isn't, uh, this isn't, should be cheap. And you figure it out. But a lot of people, from what I understand from some of the candidates, they're going to back down. I mean, we don't need to attend these meetings. We don't need to attend them because they're not necessary. Well, if you don't attend them, what are you going to do? So I think it's just a trial at one time. And both of them have stated, from what I understand, in, 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 in their election uh, time, of changing the whole statute that is. So it's our choice now to either keep them up there or increase, which is better than, I think, just all of a sudden a $100,000 or a $94,000 job without not knowing what to expect. There's more to it, but the first four years is a big learning step. We all started out there. So there are some debatable and philosophical choices about what we do here. So we're uh, looking to uh, come to some consensus so we need the board can support. Just going to remind us it needs to happen before election day. So we still have one week. One week. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a lot of time, but at the same time, it's, I mean, it's not required that you make a decision today. But yeah. we'd like to know what you'd like us to propose in a form of a resolution. The resolutions before you could be amended easily enough. I mean, you could adopt it today with yeah. numbers that you recommend that this is just a proposal. It's, uh, it's not required by statute that uh, all commissioners are paid the same. I suppose someone could imply that because the statutory minimums show that they're all, uh, all elected officials have a statutory minimum that's equal at our county level uh, per the size of our county. Uh, but I'm not aware of any legal mandate that suggests you have to be uh, every elected official the same. The other choice would be maybe, and this might be in your step, is the COLA from that point. And then the COLA, which is what how we got to hire. It's the same thing. Right? Well, then it, depends, it depends what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. Start okay. off at, at an X number and head towards 94 by the fourth year. It's You could call it a COLA or you could call it a graduation. Well, the or, COLA was like 34% when we started. And that could be the thing. same thing today. I mean, okay. I just want to graduate and I'll start at a point and graduate up to the same wages in the fourth year. It's going to be hard to tell because of the percentage change. The 2005 to 2008 was $10,000. So okay. Let's go closer. There was so much other stuff going on with that. Uh, well, let's go closer. Let's say 2012 to 2016 was none. Yeah. Yeah, so our district uh, 1 and 2 have been frozen for how long? Until, until your last election. It was in for quite a few years. Yeah. So, you know, it's this thing, I just think that from what I, I just think there should be a, a desire to work for the county and, and, and not want to be anti-government and be against it and say we're not going to be involved because we don't have to. I also think that if we're going to change the process, which could be done because Probably none of us are going to be here in three or four years. Or maybe maybe some for in five or six, maybe. But you never know yourself, Commissioner. I'm not planning on dying. Well, no, no, we didn't say that. I'm saying here. But yet, you know, I'm hoping, you know, I, I, do, this, yeah, I know, I know. But I'm just saying here. So things are going to change quite a bit then, too. And it may be a five man board. It may be a city county council. Who knows? 85,000 people in the city and 15,000 out there, you know, county residents. 
could happen. So that's, that's what I'm saying. Just, uh, I, I, don't, I don't think this is a, I think this is a work in progress job. And I think you're right, but that's a pretty big steep increase of uh, whatever your starting point was. If it was my starting point, it's $24,000 increase in four years. It's a pretty good steps increase. Let that person be the one to raise his rate, just like we had to do, and we get counted for it. Let that person. So I wanted to <clears throat> give the board an opportunity to share your views before I weighed in, because I suspected that possibly we might not be on exactly the same page here. Most issues, most of the time, we are. I certainly understand <clears throat> some of the frustration that I hear. Um, I know that when I came into office, it was at a time when we were implementing portions of something described to me as the hate group study, it was a, a salary and wage study, which identified different positions in the county that they thought were over, under, or adequately staffed and salaried and it was that study that said that you probably ought to elevate the commissioner's salaries and it did it on a graduated basis over several years and so those increases were based on bringing us up to uh, market value if you will for the responsibilities of the position uh, to my recollection they weren't based on experience level of somebody coming into the position second observation I would make is that the interview for this job is called an election and it's up to the voters to decide whether or not they think the person who is being interviewed i.e. elected is competent to do the job and there really isn't from, from how I see it there really isn't a lot of distinction there uh, when the people hire a commissioner as to whether or not they're coming in partially qualified or fully qualified. They're hiring them to do the job based on their skill set and experience at the time of the election. And so ethically, I, I think you almost have to, uh, not almost ethically, I, I think the salaries have to be the same for all commissioners being asked to do the same job. Um, now, if the salaries are offensive to someone being elected coming in and some of the candidates have, have used that word to describe the salary, then it's it's their salary, it's their money. They're they're free to donate it to charity or back to the county or whatever they need to do to ease their conscience. But um, the people are going to hire somebody to come in and do this job. They have a set of expectations, and in four years, if they don't feel that they're up to the task or they haven't met their ethical obligations, they aren't willing to go to the meetings and represent the county, then fire them at the next election. So that's um, that's kind of my take. Um, I'll, I'll offer a, a side note, which is there's there's an awful lot of experience sitting up here, county commissioner experience, and if, if we're going to pay people based on their experience level coming in, then by, by logic and reason you would pay them for their experience level as they move through their career. So you know, at, uh, at some point we'd have to look at how many years experience each person has and who has a bachelor's, who has a master's, who has a PhD, who's worked government before. You want to roll all these things in and figure out how much we pay people, but I don't think that's the intent. I think the statute intends that there's a job that has a set of responsibilities. Uh, everybody gets paid the same amount for that same job, and if you don't perform, you get unelected. So, um, but I do understand the frustration because some of us have, have gone through periods. I, I wrote the resolution freezing my own salary for, I don't know if it was four years, eight years, whatever. But I did that because we were getting a lot of criticism from the public that, you know, we were being paid more than we were worth. And my previous employers didn't think so. I took a pretty big pay cut to come here. Happy to do so. Not complaining. But... Um, 
I think there's a reasonable expectation when somebody files to run for these positions that they can fairly expect to be compensated on par with the other commissioners, even though they don't have the same number of years' experience coming in. But I certainly understand and, and appreciate the, the sentiments from my fellow commissioners because it is it is frustrating to have people challenge you on that. It's, the job is is much bigger, much broader, and if you do it with a conscience much deeper than than I think most people realize. So. That would be my uh, my thoughts, but as always, I will respectfully defer to the majority of the board on anything that they wish to do. What were you looking for today? Discussion? Well, either approval of the resolution that we submitted or some kind of consensus direction that we can come back with. Well, if, if two of the three commissioners would like you to bring back alternate proposals, then that's the appropriate thing to do. Um, and we've got three different opinions here. And, and uh, you know, my, I, as I said to start with, my thought was, and you want know, to start, you know, because of, you know, we don't hire anybody at, at full, but I do have to agree with Brad that, uh, you know, it, it's a, a position that somebody has spent time to elect for, and, and uh, with full, and, you know, I would expect that they're going to step in and uh, be going to these meetings like everybody, like the rest of us do, and, and commit their time to the county. Um, it would uh, it really upset me if, if we went to a full wage and, and they weren't interested in, in you know, uh, you know, we got, what, like 20 plus meetings a piece that we go to and, and uh, it would it'd really be upsetting if they came in and decided, no, we're not going to any meetings and mm -hmm. um, expect the, the pay is the same as everybody else. Well, Commissioner Cook, if I might just insert a thought, I absolutely agree with there's, I think each of us is on about 25 different boards and commissions where we represent the county's interests. And like you, I'd be very disappointed if somebody came in at, at a full salary and, and wasn't willing to fulfill those duties. Uh, we're mindful that the statutory minimum requirements are much less than we do. But if a person comes in, accepts the full salary, and doesn't engage, I don't think it's our position. I think it's the voters' position to fire them. So, yeah. and there'd be there's a four-year window there for him for him to look at it. But um, you know, there there is a at least an intellectual argument that could be made that you could just drop all the commissioner salaries to the absolute minimum statutory amount of, I think, 40000 or so, and change the nature of the job and not have us representing the county at 70 or 80 different boards and committees and commissions statewide and in some cases nationally, and, and dramatically de-scope the job. The question is, is that a good investment for the people of Franklin County? You would save probably $150,000 a year in total salaries and benefits, and I think the county, and there's no way to know a number, but I suspect that the lost opportunity for grants, for other revenue, for other benefits to the people of the county would be many, many times that. So I, yeah. I'm not advocating. I think that would be a horrible investment for the people of the county. Yeah. But I do think that that, to some degree, eliminates the feelings of people we've heard say that the job ought to just be dropped to the minimum salary and, and just do board meetings and not engage in those other activities. It truly is full-time job plus if, if you do it thoroughly. So I'm not advocating for that. As you'll recall, in the past years I have offered to make that motion if that's what the board wanted to do. And I don't think any of us ever felt that that was in the best interest of the county. No, I don't. But, uh, 
Well, with this, uh, with this discussion, I, you know, I, I've got to feel that the, the candidates are, um, like I say, it would be upsetting if they come in and, and don't want to uh, engage. But, uh, but with that discussion, I can go ahead and, and uh, make a motion to... Uh, um, I don't have a resolution number here, I guess, but uh, I approve resolution 2018 and and uh, for the commissioner's salaries. One thing in that resolution that hasn't been noted is that this has no effect on the salaries for positions one and two. Those were previously set before the last election and by law cannot be changed. Up or down, up right. or down during the term, right? And and before we uh, move forward on the motion, well, I, I, I'm obligated to seek a second before I make comments, so apologize for that. Is there a second to the motion for approval of 2018-319 as presented? I won't do a second. Carly, I need a point of, con of clarification here. The amount set for this position is the same as the other two? Okay. I should know, but I don't even know what my salary is. It's not my focus. Okay, so we have a motion. Uh, I will second, uh, and now we'll move to discussion. Commissioner Cook, you made the motion. Any other comments from you? No, I think it's okay. been discussed. Commissioner Miller, anything no, you want to add? Just that, uh, I know, just some of the things I've read and one candidate, you know, really is sorry. sorry. Um, it kind of puts us down, and, and the statement said we should get paid, and hopefully it may not turn out that way. But I just think it's pretty high pay for non experienced people that have not been out there and tried this yet. You are correct in one thing. It's not our choice to pick who gets elected. It is our choice to set the wages, but that's, if that's the way the vote goes, that's the way it goes. However, I have heard two different things. I hear the county complain, we're getting paid way too much, and I hear other people say, well, you guys, you guys get paid well. I mean, good, I mean, fair, because of the work you do. So I think it all depends on the person that comes out there. But I'm going to still oppose it, just because I just think it's a large amount for the first four years, um, you know, and, and I know the first four years of training. The first year, four years, you, can, you don't get all of me, you don't get it, it's just a good build up. Uh, so I, I will oppose uh, that motion. I think I have just one other observation to make. Um, there was a point a few years back, several years back, I don't recall the exact year, but uh, there was Public pressure brought, you know, it wasn't so much public, and Wendy, I see in the audience apologies in advance, but I think it largely came from the editorial board at the Tri City Herald um, suggesting that commissioners ought to uh, donate some portion of their uh, salaries back to the county. And I don't even remember the logic for, for that assertion, but in, in fairness, maybe there wasn't any. <laughs> but, but the point I want to make is that the statute envisions uh, people knowing what the salary is uh, before they come into the job and that there's an expectation of doing the job at least to the state minimum, hopefully more. But in particular, and this is the key point I want to make, is that those salaries are, are not to be adjusted during the term. So imagine if you have a superior court judge who is an elected official whose salary is set in part by this board, and halfway through the term, a commissioner or commissioners plural wanted to say, Judge, you know, we just think you're being too harsh on folks, or we don't think you're being hard enough, and that pay raise that was supposed to happen mid-cycle, eh, it's maybe not going to happen if you don't get with it. Or we try to say to the sheriff, another independent elected, you know, we don't think you're doing a good enough enforcement job on X, Y, and Z, and that <coughs> minimum pay thing, well, that may not happen. 
No, it's not supposed to work that way. The statute clearly envisions that the salary is set at the start. There are other independent electeds. You don't, you don't, and you may not, by law, mess with those salaries. And so I really think that um, if somebody comes into the job and they've got a deeply held ethical or other kind of belief and they think that they're being paid too much, there ought not be pressure on them to donate it or give it back to the county. That's an individual decision for themselves to make if, if they feel strongly. And I bring that up because um, some people who have uh, run for this position over the years have, have said that. And my contention has always been and fine. It's an individual decision. Ethically, I think we have to pay everybody the same. Our hope is that they respect that and they give their best to the job. And if they don't, it's up to the voters. So back in the day when there was uh, furloughs required for mm -hmm. employees, you know, right? I, uh, we don't really have a furlough program, but I did pay back to the county the same amount that the rest of our employees were. And I did too. Losing. Yeah. So you mentioned something about. Uh, I thought we ran into a problem with gifting. If we had that money and you gave it. No, back to um, the courthouse anyway. No, but it's in some situation we had with gifting. Well, some people suggested it might be gifting. I, I certainly don't think it is at all because I don't, yeah, I don't know what the law as is. part of your salary, once you get paid, it's your money. You do with it what you like. And if you don't think that the job uh, warrants the salary and you know you want to give some back to the county, that's an individual mm -hmm. decision. I don't think it's something where the board should try to influence that. If the Herald wants to, that's that's their prerogative. Yeah, I was just trying to stay equal with our employees that were taken up. Right, same here. Same here. And I understand that. Um, and like I said, that's an individual decision. Mm -hmm. You chose to make it. Good for you. Um, no issue with that. But anyway, to get us back okay. on track here, we've got a motion. We've got a second for approval of 2018 319. This would set the District 3 salary at the same rate that the other two uh, commissioner districts are currently being paid and would have no effect on Districts 1 and 2 since we are mid cycle and by law they can't be changed until the end of the present term. Last call for any comments or questions? Just one or more, I guess. And that's just, sure. uh, just the fact that I just want. It be knowing that I have voted against many of these increases. We've had four or five of them. The only one I did is when I was lacking because of the two years I voted with to catch up. And that was a substantial amount. But I have voted against any of these, trying to keep it comparable. So this just isn't me now angry or anything like that. It's a fact that I do think that we should earn our way. I think it does take time. I think we should prove it. And I understand the election policy. People run with that anticipation, so I'm never going to do less. <laughs> and it's just, uh, it's just a fact of, um, it, it's, it's a pretty good job. It's a pretty good job, but you've got to work it. And, and that's what I think, you know, needs to be said. And I think these three here do that. We attend a lot of meetings, we're at a lot of functions, and uh, we have a lot of knowledge. But other than that, um, that's just what I wanted to mention. Okay. okay. Anything else? No, I know. I just I just, <laughs> I just wanted to make sure that uh, you know occasionally we'll get to the point we're ready to vote and there will be some. Or you'll say, wait a minute. Yeah, well, there'll, there'll be something that we've overlooked that you know. So I'm not hearing anything else. All right. Um, motion and second for approval. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed, same sign? No, no opposed. Okay. So for the record, two to one, Commissioner Miller, Miller votes nay, and uh, the resolution is passed as presented. Carl and Chief, thank you for your work on this. Thanks to the board Thanks. for good discussion. agenda this morning is public comment. This is the first of two opportunities. Anybody from the public that's wishing to speak with the board, this would be one of 
at least two opportunities. There's a face I recognize. Good morning, Zara. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. Thanks. So just on that last issue, what I wanted to say and address your issue, uh, Commissioner Miller, was the concern that the possibility of one of the two candidates not uh, fulfilling responsibility to a full-time job. And I'd just like to say that it is my full intent and uh, yeah. if I were to be elected to do that. I know it's a full-time job. I commend you all for the job that you do. I know it's difficult, and it's not easy to, um, you know, have a different schedule every single day of the week and be at over 20-some board and commission meetings. So um, thank you for letting me address you. Thank you. Thanks for your comments. And I'll just say for myself, I've never heard you say or do anything that would indicate anything less. So, yeah. Thank you. Okay, anyone else wishing to speak with the board? Okay. That brings us to office business. Do we have uh, payrolls and warrants today? We really have uh, fund expenditures, no payrolls today. Okay. Um, looks to be about 11 miscellaneous items, current expense, uh, commissary, county roads, motor vehicle, public works, etc. The bottom line of these items is 492000 $657.31, and uh, Keith has reviewed them, Mr. Burkhart approved them, and they're audited by Rosa Gomez. Okay, I will second the motion. Okay, motion is second for approval of fund expenditures as presented. Any comments or questions? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those are approved. Any others? Just that. Negative. That was one and only this morning. Okay, we have five items in the consent agenda this morning. Are there any items, any one item or items that any commissioner wishes to pull for separate consideration? Please let us know. Not hearing any. Uh, we'd entertain a motion for approval of the consent agenda as presented. I um, move that we approve the consent agenda one through five. Second. Okay, motion second for approval of the consent agenda as presented with five items. Any comments or questions? Mr. Johnson, anything on these that is new or different than the one, I guess? Okay. So no changes. All right. All in favor of consent agenda as presented, please say aye. 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 Consent agenda is approved as presented. That takes us to administration office business. Yeah, there's one item listed on the agenda that I just more or less had replaced over the current um, medical services contract with the Correction Center expires at the end of this month. Um, I think you recall that we uh, eventually went out with an RFP, but we only had one uh, response to that that was uh, responsible there that was uh, over the record of the contract. So we expect that contract to be back before you next week for the I wanted to update you on that. That's all I had for those. Okay. Um, I see uh, minutes from October 9, 2018. I didn't see those in the consent or in the regular agenda, so we'll go ahead and present those to the board now for approval. And since it's not on the agenda, I would ask for a motion to approve. Okay, well, I'll make the motion to approve, and we'll let Mr. Cook look at them. You already Yeah, I've read yep. Yep. Okay, so I will make that motion. Okay, is motion and second to approve. Mr. Cook, you did second, correct? Yes. Motion and second to approve minutes from uh, October 9th as presented 2018. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Mr. Cook, you concur? Yes. Okay. Then I will go ahead and sign these on behalf of the board. You can pass those down, please. This brings us back to public comment. Anybody decide they want to chat with us? Okay. Uh, brings us to executive sessions. No executive sessions for today. And before we go to adjournment, I would ask uh, any updates, anything that any commissioner wishes to share. This would be time to do so. After um, budgets tomorrow, I'll be leaving for Olympia for the county road administration to hold for the rest of the week. So. I'll be out uh, Wednesday afternoon, Thursday, and Friday. 
Hey there, the Pasco Chamber meeting from 11 to 1.30. Um, I'm expecting to be back for the budget, but in case, uh, maybe a few minutes late. Okay, um, just noting here that uh, our workshop, budget workshop, that we recessed uh, at the end of the day yesterday will reconvene at 1 p.m. right here in this room today. It is an open public meeting if anyone wants to wants to sit in and listen to that work. And we need to sign these uh, consent agenda items. Other than that, I don't think there's any other business before the board. So with that, last call for items. We're adjourned. Thanks.